have you heard about defending our faith? In this lesson, we will learn about righteous and humble actions. Happy Sunday. Are you missing your Sunday school? Would you like to be part of our Sunday school? Then subscribe. Hi, I'm Regina Dean Reed and I teach Sunday school at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Mabel, Mississippi. Now, let's get into this lesson. And today's the lesson is Defending Our Faith. Devotional reading is 2 Timothy, 4th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Background scriptures, 1 Peter, 3rd chapter, verses 8 through 17. And our key verse is 1 Peter, 3rd chapter, verse 17. Today's date is March 17, 2024. Let's start with the prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us in all situations. Help us be unified with others, believers. Show us how we can be attentive to the working of your spirit. Fill us with peace and humility in all the trials that we might face. We trust that you will work through us to complete your will in the world. In the name of Jesus, amen. Lesson aims. Identify the Old Testament text quoted. Two, compare and contrast the things we must do with what we must not do. And three, State must do and one must not do for personal focus in the week ahead. Lesson introduction. Why does God let bad things happen to good people? Shouldn't we seek revenge on those who wrong us? These are common questions that everyone eventually ponders. We try to understand our pain and figure out how to cope with the resulting sadness or even make it go away completely. Victor. E. Frankel's book, Man's Search for Meaning, published in 1946, explores his quest to find purpose and significance during his time as a prisoner in a Nazi concentration camp. By the end of the book, Frankel acknowledges the existence of human wickedness and the ability of suffering individuals to discover meaning in their struggle. Many figures in the scripture endure persecution, and the reaction continued to offer valuable lessons for future generations. Lesson context. Peter, one of Jesus' original 12 disciples, was known for his impulsive nature. Despite this, he held a special place among the 12 and was named first in all listings. Jesus gave him the keys to the kingdom of heaven. After Jesus ascended, Peter became a leader in the early church focusing mainly on Jews and facing persecution. The letter of 1 Peter was likely written in Rome during Emperor Nero's reign. It reflects on the Christian relationship with the state and addresses suffering believers. Lesson scriptures. 1 Peter, 3rd chapter, verses 8 through 17. Verse 8. Finally be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brothering, be pitiful and courteous. Believers are characterized by nine key qualities that guide their conduct in a challenging world. The first quality, one mind, underscores the importance of unity among believers. A divine blessing. Unity is a reoccurring theme in the New Testament. The second quality, which transliterates from Greek to English becomes sympathy. This term is used as a verb in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse 15, and the tenth chapter, verse 34. When Greek letters are substituted for English equivalents that sound similar, it reveals Philadelphia, signifying the city of brotherly love. Believers are part of God's family and should exhibit love toward one another. They're encouraged to live with love and compassion demonstrating genuine concern for others. To be pitiful means to be tenderhearted, reflecting a life transformed by God's love. Being courteous involves showing difference in kindness, prioritizing the needs of others above one's self. Verse 9, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing. 
knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. The rule of not repaying evil for evil can be found in various other places like Proverbs, the 20th chapter, verse 22, also chapter 24 and verse 29, Matthew chapter 5, verse 39 and verse 44, Romans chapter 12, verse 17 and 19, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15. The original readers were facing insult and slander. Jesus also endured mockery and insults during his crucifixion, but did not retaliate. See 1 Peter, 2nd chapter, 23rd verse. Instead of retaliating with evil, we should respond with goodness. Our actions should reflect God's love, not for earning salvation, but as a result of it. Let's be channels of God's blessings to others. Which path do you choose? Verse 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. The verse starts with a quote from Psalms 34, 12 through 16, which supports Peter's point about behaving correctly during tough times. The psalm was written by David while he was suffering as mentioned in 1 Samuel 21st chapter, verses 10 through 15. Peter uses this quote to remind believers who are facing trials to watch what they say. Similar to James, third chapter, verses 1 through 10. The use of parallelism in Hebrew poetry is clear here, with tongue and lips being synonyms for speech and evil and guile having similar meaning. Verse 11. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Hebrew parallelism is seen in, in Psalm 34 and 14, where seeking peace means pursuing it. Believers have peace with God, Romans 5th chapter and 1st verse, and should strive for peace in relationships, found in Romans 14 chapter verse 19. This doesn't mean compromising values for peace, Romans the 12th chapter and the 18th verse. While God is a God of peace, he also fights battles. Revelation, the second chapter, verse 16, and the 19th chapter, verse 19, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. In this verse, Peter uses anthropomorphism to describe God in human terms. Even though God is a spirit, Peter talks about God having eyes, ears, and a face to help people understand God's character better. This technique is common in the Bible, seen in many passages like Genesis, the 6th chapter and the 8th verse, and James, the 5th chapter and the 4th verse, verse 13. And who is he that will harm you if ye do be followers of that which is good? A new literary technique emerges, the rhetorical question, these questions are not meant to be answered, as the answer is clear. The rhetorical question is this, context compared an ideal scenario with what Peter's audience was probably facing as mentioned in the following verse. Verse 14, But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Peter wanted to see good behavior recognized. But that doesn't always happen. Believers may face oppression, so they should be prepared for it. The Greek word for happy can also mean blessed, showing that suffering doesn't bring enjoyment. Blessings come from obeying God's word, and ultimate blessings is found in forgiveness through faith in Christ Jesus. This part of the verse refers to a passage in Isaiah 8, chapter 12, verse. It talks about a conflict between the kingdoms of Judah and Israel. When King Ahaz of Judah was in danger, God promised protection, Isaiah 7, chapter, verse 39. Despite facing destruction, they were told not to fear their enemies, but to fear the Lord instead. And that's Isaiah, the 8th chapter, verses 12 through 15. Verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason. 
of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Replace incorrect actions with correct ones. Sanctify means to make holy. The Greek word for sanctify is also translated as hallowed in verses about God's holiness. But we can't make God holier. We should change our perspective of him. Colossians, the fourth chapter, the sixth verse. And similar verses urges us to be prepared in two ways, by doing good and getting ready for Jesus' return. We need to maintain a balance, not favoring one over the other. Christians should be prepared to share their hope with others, showing it through their words and actions when necessary. This applies to all believers, not just those who preach or teach. To have a real impact, believers should respond with humility and respect. Those who follow Jesus are encouraged to remain gentle and humble in their interactions with others. Verse 16, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. The New Testament talks a lot about having a conscience that knows right from wrong. It's mentioned around 30 times. A good conscience helps us to make good choices. Acts the 23rd chapter, verse 1, and chapter 24, verse 16. Also found in Romans the 9th chapter, verse 1. The Acts, like a moral alarm system, when it lines up with God's plan. Romans the 2nd chapter, verse 15. But bad desires can drown out our conscience. Ephesians the 4th chapter, verse 19. 1 Timothy 4th chapter, verse 2. In the King James Version, conversation means more than just talking. It's about how you live your life. And this is found in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 22. Verse 17, For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. The letter emphasizes the importance of good behavior in all circumstances. When believers face suffering because of their good conduct, it shows non-believers a powerful example. Christ endured suffering as well. Serving as the ultimate model, believers should be careful when dealing with suffering, as it may be allowed by God for a reason. However, God can bring about positive outcomes from suffering since that is his plan. Although God doesn't enjoy watching people suffer, he sometimes permits it. Believers' endurance through suffering leads to perseverance and a deeper connection with Christ. Write your answers to these questions in the comments below. Question 1. When is it hardest to not react to verbal attacks? Verse 2. What good things have come your way after enduring suffering for doing what was right? And verse 3. How do you stay prepared to speak about the hope you have? Conclusion. Not many will go through what the Christian martyrs did, but that doesn't mean Peter's advice isn't relevant. Instead, it is even more important. When we face suffering, we often ask, why is it happening? That's normal. But we should also think about what comes next. This shift from why to what's next can show others how our faith helps us deal with hard times. God cares for us and he wants the best for us. So when we suffer, let's stick together and show our trust in him. Thought to remember, let suffering strengthen your faith. Our Sunday school teacher training, y'all can recite it with me, will be on Thursday from seven to eight. I will give you the exact date and time in the community tab and at the end of the videos. And if you have enjoyed this lesson, give us a thumbs up. Get into a Bible study group, whether it's online or in person. Get your shots. Stay six feet apart. Wear your mask. Love each other. Pray for each other. And I will see you all next week.